YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography, so if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. So as you saw in my previous video, I just got back from a fantastic trip to the Lake District here in the UK. The Lake District, this beautiful region in England that's just covered in mountains and rivers, all these like rolling hills, it's just crazy. It's really marvelous and it really makes the UK be that much more interesting and special for me while I'm living here. I took a whole lot of pics during that trip and I posted a ton of them in the video. So check out this link above to see that video and to see full coverage of everything that went down that week. All right, so this video is gonna be all about printing. I recently bought some 12 by 16 inch paper and that's pretty big for considering what I've been doing in the darkroom so far. So far I've only been printing eight by 10, but I decided to step it up a notch and kind of increase the size just a bit more. 12 by 16 isn't massive by any means, but it's definitely big, especially for the darkroom. The paper that I'm using specifically is Fuji Crystal Archive Photographic Paper that has a luster finish. Considering I went to the Lake District where there's just beautiful landscapes left and right, I knew I would get some fantastic landscape images and I wanted to give them a really good treatment from a printing perspective. So I figured eight by 10 just was too small and wasn't gonna cut it. So we're gonna be printing much bigger this time around. Increasing the size of your prints does present a few challenges when doing the darkroom process. This particular the image was shot on Portra 400 and it was shot with my Canon 300V and an L lens that's 1740 millimeter, which is perfect for landscapes. Before I get into the details, let's go ahead and jump in the dark room and see how I made this print. All right, so we're actually in my kitchen right now. I decided to do this session here because it's way too hot in the bathroom, so I'm not gonna go over there and sweat my ass off. I'm gonna do it in the kitchen where I got some windows and some better ventilation. That way I can relax and not have to worry too much about that. So I'm gonna start off with just a couple test exposures doing about half and half. And I am using a whole eight by 10 sheet as my test strip, given that the image is gonna be even bigger than that. So I wanna be able to see the whole image and see if there's gonna be any need for any dodging and burning or where the colors kinda of show better or worse. Um, and a whole sheet is gonna help me do that. So I'm gonna do my first one with a half and half exposure. The first half will be shorter than the second half and we'll go from there. Okay, so I actually did various test prints here. Um, I started off with the half and half and then actually did a couple thirds. And I was messing around with different exposure times ranging basically from somewhere around 10 seconds all the way up to 20 seconds to see whether the sky was nice and bright at a certain amount or the foreground, which was the inside of the mountain, was better or worse at certain times. So just kind of going to see the whole spread there. And I think I'm starting to settle around somewhere for 15 seconds for the sky and then a bit less perhaps for the actual mountain itself. This next round, I'm actually going to mess around with the colors just a bit and start to add in a bit more magenta because my mountains are looking super green. And they were definitely very green, but not that like aggressive neon. So I'm gonna add some magenta and a bit of yellow and see what happens. All right, so I actually added my magenta and yellow and I'm gonna dial it back on my next set of test prints and see if I can kind of balance the green with just a hint of that magenta that I want. Additionally, I think I'm settling in very nicely on the actual exposure that I'm looking for. And it seems like I will have to dodge the mountain a bit to really shrink the exposure time for that part and then let the rest of the exposure time go just to the sky and to the top part of the mountains. As you can see, I've been getting some funky stuff on the bottom of my prints here, and that's due to uneven development. I'm not too really worried about it right now given that these are all test prints, but for the final print, I'll make sure to really agitate the tank very nicely, kind of rock it back and forth to ensure that both the top and the bottom of the print are getting adequate development time. So I'm gonna dial back the magenta just a bit and I'm gonna dial back the yellow as well. And that will take away some of both of those colors, but still add in just a hint. That way we get away from that really bright kind of neony green to something that looks a bit more realistic. So this last test print actually gives me exactly what I want. I think the colors are right where I need them to be, but I also kind of understand better now how much I need to dodge for the mountains. I think the mountains are gonna be in exposure for about eight to 10 seconds or so, and then the top part of the mountain and then the sky will be for the rest of the exposure, probably going up to 15 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my big sheet of paper now and do the full 12 by 16 print, and let's see what we get.
All right, y'all, I hope you enjoy watching the darkroom process there. Here's the big print that I made in the darkroom. Pretty happy with how it looks. It's definitely a much bigger size than I'm used to, but I think this is a really good size for a print. You really get to appreciate the details and the colors, and the print is just a bit bigger at this size compared to the eight by 10 that I've been doing all the time. I just love the overall setup of this print here. The colors look great, the print is nice and large, there's enough detail in kind of the actual far landscape, and it's just a really cool thing to see, especially after spending so much time out in the mountains and taking so many photos. It's very nice to kind of get something tangible out of that entire week, besides just the negatives. All right, so a couple things to note in terms of the difference between printing smaller 8x10 and this larger 12x16. First and foremost is the enlarger extension. So to get an enlarged image that's that big to fit on that paper, you actually have to increase the distance between your enlarger and the base of your enlarger by a substantial amount. You just turn the knob and move the enlarger up until you get the image size that you're looking for. Directly related to that is the fact that you'll need longer exposure time for your image. Just like cameras that have extending bellows that allow for a kind of macro and stuff like that, when you increase the distance between your image surface and the tip of the lens, then you're actually going to have to increase the exposure time. So for a print, typically I would do about, let's say at f11, you'd have seven to 10 seconds exposure. For this print, I actually printed at f8, and I still needed to be printing for at least 10 seconds in order to get a fairly base even exposure. Lastly, I needed a lot more chemicals than I'm used to when processing this particular image. I added probably an extra ounce of liquid for each developer. Additionally, I also agitated very aggressively when developing the print and when blitzing the print as well. I wanted to ensure that the chemicals got all over the print surface and therefore I really had to make sure to get the chemicals all around inside of the canister. My canister actually only holds one sheet of 12 by 16 paper, whereas with eight by 10, I can hold two entire sheets. So I'm definitely gonna be printing a lot more of these big images as time comes and I've got a whole backlog of images that I wanna get through. I'm probably gonna to have to buy an easel as well because this first image, although I'm really happy with it, it's just slightly crooked and also the borders aren't perfect in terms of like a little bit of leakage of image on the corner. So with an easel, you solve for that and you don't have to worry about it at all. So that's what I got for this week. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a bit about printing larger images. If you like this video, please go ahead and give me a like. If you wanna see more videos like this, definitely go ahead and subscribe. I also have a whole playlist about printing right up here that you can check out if you want to see more of my printing in action. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.